Hello everyone, my name is Mari Flor Garcia and today's workshop is about the Chihuahuan Desert Food Webs, brought to you by the El Paso Transpecos Audubon Society, the Friends of the Rio Bosque, and the Insights Museum. So have any of you heard the news about birds lately? So what is happening to the grassland birds? That's our question. Grassland bird populations have declined by 53%, and that is more than any other group of North American birds, as you can see here, way more. And suitable habitat in the region is critical to grassland bird conservation. Now, when you think of the Chihuahuan Desert, you don't think we have much grasses. You're like, well, grasslands in the Chihuahuan Desert, it's too hot. Well, that is wrong. The Chihuahuan Desert does have grasslands, and here is a picture of what those grasslands look like. Desert grasslands are an important habitat for many species of birds, and these birds will help with pollination, seed dispersal, and they maintain healthy populations of their prey and predator species. And here we have a picture of a chestnut collared monster, which is one of the many grassland birds you can find here. So long ago, our desert was covered by healthy grasslands, but due to poor grazing, urbanization, invasive species, and even climate change, less than 20% of the Chihuahuan Desert is grassland. Here you can see a picture of a healthy grassland on the left, and probably due to poor grazing here on the right, we see no grasses at all. So this area, provides poor habitat for grassland birds. So how are Chihuahuan Desert grassland birds affected? 85% of grassland birds will migrate in the winter to the Chihuahuan Desert, as you can see here. They will feed on insects and other invertebrates like grasshoppers, crickets, ants, wasps, and all that good stuff. And they also feed on native grass seeds from plants like Cytos grama, Tobosa grass, fluff grass, and others. So here we have a list of priority birds at risk in the Chihuahuan Desert grasslands. The grasshopper sparrow, Sprague's pipits, burring owl, Macaw's longspur, and the western and eastern meadowlark. And here's a longer list of other birds that are at risk. So I leave you with this question. How will the decline of Chihuahuan desert grasslands impact the ecological community? So if the Chihuahuan desert grasslands keep disappearing and we have less, what will be the impact on the ecological community? Here we have a table that shows you raw estimates of change in Chihuahuan Desert ecoregion land cover. So between 1992 and 2000, there was a 299% change of land cover in our desert. And that means an average of 37% change a year. Understanding how grassland birds interact with the rest of the grassland ecological community is critical if we want to protect them. So now let's get into what is a food web? Which one would you say is a food web? The picture on the left or the picture on the right? A food web represents feeding interactions within an ecosystem consisting of multiple food chains. So if you said the picture on the left is a food web, you are correct. The picture on the right is a food chain. So what are producers and what do they have to do with the food web? Producers capture light energy to make organic compounds. They're also known as autotrophs, which are the organisms that create their own food. Here you have a picture of an ocotillo, poppies, and a prickly pear cactus. These all make their own food. Consumers. They get energy from consuming other foods, also known as heterotrophs, 
They cannot create their own food. They include carnivores, herbivores, and even omnivores. Here we have a picture of a coyote and a moth caterpillar. So trophic levels. These are the levels in which species can be categorized into in a food web. You have your level one, your producers, like grasses. Level two, your primary consumers. Your level three, secondary consumers. And level four, tertiary consumers. Your primary consumers are the ones who eat the producers. Those are herbivores. So here is a mule deer eating a prickly pear fruit. Your secondary consumers, they're the ones that eat the primary consumers. So you have a lizard eating a grasshopper. Then you have your tertiary consumers. They're the ones who eat the secondary consumers, carnivores. Here's a picture of a burrowing owl eating a lizard. Now, trick question. In which trophic level do decomposers belong in? So decomposers are the ones that break down organic material. And you have a picture of a millipede and fungi. Where do you think they belong in? Which level? They belong in all the levels because they decompose the dead organic material from all those animals in each level. Energy transfer. So the energy that producers get from the sun is transferred to the animals that consume them. And the producers are the ones that support all the levels above. And only about 10% of energy is transferred from one level to the next. So we don't get that much energy. The arrows in a food web represent the direction that energy is transferred. Most of the energy is lost as heat through the metabolic and digestive processes, and this loss of available energy limits the number of trophic levels in a community. So here you see the energy from the grass will go to the bird that eats it, the energy from the bird will go to the snake, the energy from the snake to the hawk, and it'll be less each time. So what happens when a food web is disturbed? So let's say I go into this food web, this desert food web, and I get rid of all the rattlesnakes. Bam, they're gone, I don't want them. So what's gonna happen, a direct effect of this is that the jackrabbit populations are going to increase because they'll have no rattlesnakes to worry about. An indirect effect of this would be that now that there are more jackrabbits, they'll be eating more prickly pears, leaving less prickly pears for other consumers. And now it's time for you to start your desert food web activity. In this activity, we will give you a list of species that you'll find in our desert, and you will create your own food web. Then from your own food web, you will answer a list of questions. And we will also provide a species handout for you to have information on each species that will help you create your food web. All right, let's get started.